Hi everyone, it's Rebecca here and today's video is going to be on the anatomy of lower cardio. So I think this is very important. Just if you know the anatomy, you can help diagnose diseases and it can help you uh, with like taxonomy and if people want to help you identify a species or if you want to identify them yourself, then the anatomy is really important. So I'm using this prop because I don't think people really want to see photos of dead fish. Um, or me holding a dead fish. Um, so plus you will have to do. Um, so these are from Green Fleck and they sell a whole range of different um, plushies that are really cute and the, they have quite a range of Laurel Cardo ones. So this is one of their, I think they have a few other ancestors, but this is the one closest to the actual one that it's replicating of the ancestors and they didn't have any ancestors ranunculus. <laughs> um, so I'm going to start off with measuring one. So I will mention standard, standard length. So standard length is the length from the tip of the head to the end of the caudal peduncle. The caudal peduncle is this region here after the adipose fin. So that is standard length and that is probably the one that's most reliable and you'll see mostly in the literature. The next one is total length and that includes the whole of the caudal fin. So tip of the head to caudal fin. And then you have fork length, which is to the like middle of the fork. You can't really see it on this, but I'll show other photos of different um sort of tail types in law um in Laurel Cardi. Fork length doesn't always matter because not all Laurel Cardi have a typically fork tail. The fork tail is the most common and this is sort of your um emer emerginate uh, tail. I'm not and also your normal forked ones. But there are the sort of more rounded tail types in Laurel Cardi. And I'll show sort of different like visuals. You also have um, different measurements such as you might see ones about the eye distance, the nair distance, the eye diameter and stuff like that. So next I'm going to talk about the fins and fish have varying different numbers of fins so you have usually different paired fins so that you have the pectoral fins and these have a pectoral spine you also have the ventral fins uh i've forgotten the other name for them but they do have two names and that most have a spine this fish doesn't have an anal fin but it should do and the anal fin should be around that region there you also, and that is you, that is a single fin. Um, there are fish which have double anal fins, and that's like goldfish. You also have your dorsal fin with your dorsal spine. That's quite important because you might need to, or most often you need to count the dorsal soft ray. So that does not include the spine. You might have to count anal rays and um, pectoral rays, but not as common. So you'll be counting down there and not including the spine in that. You also have the adipose fin, which is just behind. And in some species um, and genera like barium cistrus, this has a membrane between the dorsal and the um, adipose fin. And finally, you have the caudal fin, often called the tail fin by many people. And that has two spines to it. So, Laurel Cardi are defined by having, instead of scales, no catfish have scales, they have dermal plates. So these will be the plating you see on the outside of the fish. They also are defined by having odontos, and this is common in all of Laurel Cardi. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but I'll put the name on the, up on the screen. So that is the um, um, sub-order. Um, super family um, suborder contains Calicthidae, which contains Corydorus, Calicthinae, Hoplostoma, Megalichus, Leptoplosternum, and I've forgotten the rest, um, Aspidorus, Galeromystax, so all of those. And it also contains Trichomyridae, which um, has um, your Candiru. Um, and then there's a few others that aren't really noted and odontos take varied different levels in um, that order. So odontos are sort of like, well they're known as external teeth. So they cover the body 
and then they tend to be thicker or you get long ones at the um gila perk though and these are tend to be even longer in males and they'll also be quite imp well longer usually on the pectoral spine and they're usually long even longer in males and they can be very um substantial also at the caudal peduncle specifically in males some um genus have even more so um the pseudoacanthicus and the canthicus have very substantial odontos all over the body. So you have the mouth as well, and this is the uh, no representation, I just use photos. So this varies across the whole of Laurel Cardo, and it generally depends on their diet. So carnivores will, I find, have usually, like scopian cistrus has less teeth, and their mouth is quite lo elongated. Let, um, Oh, what's it called? Um, the vampires, I've forgotten their scientific name. They, um, Leprocanthica, sorry. They have very uh, elongated head and jaw, uh, mouth. Um, all have teeth. Spoon-shaped teeth are common in your sort of wood eaters, which I did a video about them um, this week. So that I'll put up there. And then... Um, it really varies. So anatomy varies a lot. So Ancistrus is well known for having tentacles on the heads. And I say tentacles over dontos because they're, I mean, over spines because spines could get confused with dontos, which are more spine-like, um, or spikes or whatever people want to say. Um, so tentacles is kind of makes it easier. Some taxa like Lassie and Cistrus, um, Nebulinchthys have very heavy odonto growth on the head and this is also sexually dimorphic. In general body length does vary across the tax and body I mean body size and this depends on their niche what they're eating stuff like that so there's no point generalizing um, like more and different tax have different um, ana anatomical parts which define them such as with barren cystus I said the membrane between the dorsal fin and the adipose fin and cistrus have the tentacles that in cistrus have the spines around the head um, and it's very important to look at those dermal plates I have seen more the skeletal anatomy so those actual dermal plates being very important in defining them but sometimes they are really difficult to see in some taxa they go up all over the body quite well Whereas in Ancestrus and Chetsomi, you might see that they're very soft there. Now, I don't think there's as much dermal plating there, but and you could kind of work out where it stops. But there's plenty of um, photos online of the skeleton anatomy of um, Lower Cardi. Anyway, um, thank you for watching. Um, I'm going to try and make more videos. I've got time next Monday to pot potentially make um, a few. But I'm till like the week after next it might be a bit of a hit and miss if I can actually make videos um if people have any requests for videos um it depends what it is taxonomy is quite difficult for me to do a video on because the main problem is actually getting footage and vid um, videos photos just to show people and I'm not sure how many people are interested in like diagnosing species um, within a tax. I'd love to do one on tier pick these, but I have been given permission for to do diagrams with other people's photos, but I don't have all the photos of tier pick these, and many taxes don't actually have photos available of them. So that's not too easy. I'm not sure if people want to see more of a selection of different law card and photos like that, um, or videos like that, sorry. So anyway, thank you for watching.